I'm Lou Jones and welcome back to my studio and back to the series on speed lights. As you all know, there's been an amazing paradigm change in using computers in our cameras. That same paradigm change has happened with the speed lights, with our lighting. Combining the two makes an incredible new change. We have opened up an entire new world of lighting to the serious photographer. But that starts the debate. If we're using small, normal flashes, we have to go to manual. Debate between manual and automatic rages its ugly head. If you're using small flashes, you have to change and use your own apertures, you're going to have to change your ISO, all of that. But with the new speed lights, we have the ability to use everything on automatic. That's what we're going to talk about today. 90% of photographers use their cameras like this. Flash on camera. Straight ahead. It's not very interesting light, but it's the beginnings of what we want to talk about. This is a very good system for wedding photographers, event photographers, even photojournalists sometimes, and especially for fill light. So it's really the building block that we ought to know, ought to know about. Here I'm going to show you how to do a very simple, straight on flash that most of us can accomplish very easily. We're going to go here, we have to make a choice on using the f-stop, and then we're going to make a guess and see if it works. 90% of photographers will use their camera and their lights this way. We're just guessing at the exposure, we're changing, guessing at the aperture. I'm going to try. Uh, well, it doesn't look very good, so we're going to have to try again. We change and make a guess to use. Now, in this case, we're going to use our LCD to look to see if we've done a very good job. If not, we're going to change things. We can use the histogram to make sure that we get a really perfect exposure. And that's why. Here we go. We're going to try again. I'll readjust the aperture. Okay. And okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. One of the main methods of using our light is to diffuse it. The easiest thing is probably to bounce. That's what this swivel is all about. We can actually move this around. We can try to use the ceiling, the walls, any kind of light surface, neutral surface so that we don't add any color. If there's a paint or any kind of surface that uh, gives a color, it'll taint the photograph. So we're always looking for some kind of surface that's white, like back here. We can change this around, swivel it, back of us, any kind of thing to get a bit. We're going to try to do our same photograph again using our same model, and all we're going to do is move and bounce it. Now we're going to use a bounce. We're going to bounce off this wall to my left. And we're going to see what we get. That's not bad. With very little effort, we get a much softer, much more attractive photograph. With today's technology, with speed lights, with dedicated systems, with cameras and lights that match Canon for Canon, Nikon for Nikon, we can do all kinds of brand new things. Now we can do everything automatically. With TTL, we're able to go to the menu, to the back of the light, and use the menu so that we can change and get all of our lights synchronized. Off to master. In master, we can change master, A, B, C. Automatic, manual, off, TTL. Automatic, manual, off, TTL. It works differently from Canon to Nikon, but we can do all of these things using the menu. Using TTL, the rules of lighting have changed forever. The default 
using automatic is that the light and the camera will give you a perfect exposure every time. No matter what you do, it will give you an acceptable exposure. We're going to demonstrate using TTL and automatic with a simple portrait situation. Three lights. Main light, hair light, background light. Master is being used only as a controller. It's not, be, it's not on, not being used as lighting at all. And then this is A, B, and C. I'm going to take a picture. Very, very nice. Very soft, very diffused. With automatic setting, using our TTL, we continue to have as much control, maybe even more, than we had before. We control each light, the hair light, the background light, and the main light, right from the master. The advantage to this is that we can choose the aperture, we can choose the ISO. In this case, we're going to change the aperture to give us a shallow depth of field. I'm going to show you how the portrait will look with a very narrow, shallow depth of field. We're going to probably put it on 2.8. Okay, and we've got a very nice photograph. You see how this looks in this case with a very shallow depth of field. But at the same time, if you want to have multiple people, you want to have couples, groups, where you need a bigger depth of field, or the background is important, we can control it by putting on a much bigger depth of field. Okay, we have, we're in aperture priority. We're going to go, we're going to use F13, a much greater depth of field here. Okay, and we get a very nice picture, and you can actually see the texture in the background now. You can see how much difference. With TTL, it's done automatically. You use a shallow depth of field, you use exposure compensation, not your f-stops, exposure compensation, and you go and give yourself a shallow depth of field or a great depth of field, and you can see the difference in the photograph. The last feature is we're going to show you how we kind of compensate each light. We're going to raise the main light a little bit, reduce the hair light, reduce the background light, and with all the gels, we're going to show you how using the back of the camera, the menu again, we can alter all of those for aesthetic reasons. We're going to use exposure compensation to change the lighting. We can go down to each, we turn that on so that it's part of the system. A, we're going to change B on, make that part of the system to TTL. We're going to go down, change C on, each one of these controls, hair light, main light, background light, and then we can go over, switch through, and change the exposure compensation, negative, so that it's underexposed, positive so that's overexposed and we can go down and do that for each light. That way we can aesthetically take care of overexposing and underexposing each light according to our whim. I've turned this one up a little bit, I've turned the background light down, and I've turned the hair light down in order to get a slightly more pleasing. I've also added gels and the TTL, the automatic, compensates for all of these diffusers and gels automatically. We've come a long way from the first on-camera direct flash now to this studio photograph. Sometimes our expectations exceed the ability of automatic settings to get what we want. We have to switch back and forth from manual to automatic to do that. If we do that, we increase our aesthetic abilities exponentially. 
You can learn all about everything we've talked about today in our book, Speed Lights and Speed Lights. Get it and you'll like it.